Hi, I'm Darlene Finnegan, PPTA and Director of Racquet Sports at Beacon Hill Club in Summit, New Jersey. Today, we will be bringing you the first in a series of instructional videos where we will be teaching you some new techniques and ways about thinking about playing platform tennis so that you can have more fun and win more matches. For the vast majority of club players, those of you playing your local league, the absolute fastest way for you to improve your game is for you to do something that I like to call love the lob. The lob is the most underutilized shot in platform tennis. The lob is a high reward, low risk shot that guarantees your continued participation in the rally when executed properly. The lob buys you time when you need it and the lob also allows you and your partner to control the pace and direction of play. So now let's go take a look at how you can love the lob. In order to hit the lob properly, the first thing we need to do is to make sure we have the proper grip. For this shot, we'll be using the continental grip. To find the continental grip, hold your paddle with a vertical face and look at the butt cap of your paddle. You'll notice that the grip of your paddle has eight flat surfaces or bevels. Start up here at the top bevel. We'll call this bevel number one. Counting in a clockwise direction, this is number two, three, four, and so on. Next, find the base knuckle of the index finger and place it on bevel number two. For you left-handers out there, you'll be placing it on bevel number eight. Now that we've got the right grip, I'm going to have Steve Kakam, an assistant pro at the Beacon Hill Club, help demonstrate the proper positioning, movement, execution, and recovery. I want to emphasize here the importance of having an open paddle face. The paddle needs to be almost parallel to the deck at impact. Lobs that drift long are almost always a cause of the paddle not being open enough, not because you swung too hard. If you don't believe me, try this. I can hit this ball as hard as I want, and as long as my paddle face is open, it'll come down very close to where I'm standing. There you go. Visualize the arc of your lob. The apex or peak of that arc needs to be on your side of the net. Any lob that is still rising as it crosses the plane of the net is most certainly going out. How do you know you've hit a good lob? If you can get your opponents to look up and back up, then you know you've hit a good lob. If you want a target, think of middle of the middle or M&M's. To demonstrate, we're going to go ahead and put this basket back to the middle of the middle and we're going to have Steve come help us and he's going to hit lobs right into the middle of the middle. Are you ready Steve? Alright. Steve, why don't you go on back to your home base. You'll notice that Steve is two to three feet behind the baseline and just inside the doubles alley. Steve is in an athletic stance ready to move. His feet are a little wider than shoulder width apart. His weight is on the balls of his feet. His paddle is up and ready. And his eyes are up and tracking the incoming overhead. Movement. As soon as you see that it's going to be a side back combination, the first thing you want to do is get all the way back to the back screen. Notice how my right hip is nearly touching the back screen. It's important that you get all the way back because you'll have more control over the height and direction of your lobs when you move forward with your body rather than reaching back with your arm. When you reach back, you tend to flick the ball out with your wrist and you lose height and control. Also, notice how I'm still on my toes even after I've turned sideways to the incoming ball. Staying on my toes means that I can quickly make tiny last-second adjustments to get into the best position to hit my lob and not get jammed. Execution. Look at my paddle here at impact. See how it's nice and open, almost parallel to the deck? It is critical that you get your paddle open at impact because that will give your lob 
the necessary height to get at least as high as the lights. My knees are bent and my paddle is well below the ball. You can see here how I'm using the energy of the falling ball. I'm lifting my paddle mostly by simply standing up and just letting the falling ball collide with the rising paddle. The contact point is around waist height and slightly out in front of my body. My eyes are on the ball the entire time. As I follow through, again, notice how all I'm really doing is standing up through the shot. My weight is moving mostly up and only slightly forward. When we teach the lob here, we like to use visual targets. We find that it focuses the students' attention on the drill. And our students tell us that it helps them when they're playing too, as they can concentrate on hitting each shot as well as they can, just like in practice. If you're new to the game, you'll want to give yourself plenty of margin for error and target your lob to land right in that mesh laundry basket that Darlene set up on the opposite side of the net, in the middle of the middle, midway between the service line and the baseline, and midway between the two sidelines. Recovery. After I follow through, I immediately recover back to my home base. Now, I'm doing this because my lobs are going pretty much cross-court to the laundry basket. When I hit my lobs cross-court, I know that the next ball that my opponents hit will be coming right back to me in the deuce court. As you progress and gain the ability to lob to different quadrants in the opposite court, you'll want to place many of your lobs straight down the line with the intent of creating an opening on the other side through where you or your partner can hit a forehand drive. When you do that, your recovery will be slightly closer to the center mark and you'll turn sideways and shape to hit a forehand drive. The specific reasons for doing this are explained in our video on backcourt tactics and strategies. See how you did. Well, Steve, looks like you have a little bit more work to do. Looks like you really need to know and own and love that ball. Thanks, Arlene. Let's look at the evidence. Sure. <laughs> so remember, a properly executed lob is easy to hit and it's the shot that will give you the most amount of reward for the least amount of risk. If you remember to love the lob, I guarantee you will have more fun and win more matches. Thanks for watching from all of us here at Beacon Hill Club. Have a great season and we'll see you out on the courts. That was easy.